This is the Backlog Exposed Podcast with Kevin Lane and Joel Rubel, bringing you weekly discussions on gaming as well as quick insights into sports, entertainment, and anything else that they can think of. Be sure to check out the BacklogExposed.com where you can listen to the podcast and get links to Twitter, Discord, YouTube, and Facebook. I'm Joe. I'm Kevin. And we are the Backlog Exposed. Yeah, yeah. Now, gear up and get ready because this backlog is about to be exposed. Yeah, yeah. Episode 50, Backlog Exposed. I uh, didn't think we'd make it here, actually, man, because uh, shit was getting crazy there for a while. Moving and job you know- and on a house and everything else we have been through quite the journey to get here but i was talking to my wife a little while ago and i was saying you know joe and i are recording episode 50 tonight and you know 40 seemed like a big number 20 seemed like a big number but you know 50 episodes is a lot of time spent and we are Honestly, I feel like we're just getting started here. Uh, the momentum, you know, the momentum, the, the Ernst, uh, in, what is the right word? Um, the angst to get this done. I, I don't know what the right word is, but we have a lot of um, potential things that we're going to be doing and, and picking up in addition to this. And uh, yeah, man, congrats to you and me and, and uh, 50 episodes, man. What is so... So that's pretty crazy. What is your, uh, you know, as we, we haven't been doing this for more than a year yet, you know, so it's not like uh, we don't want to get super sappy here, but I want to ask you a couple, you know, get, get a couple of your highlights, like some of the things that we've kind of been able to to do and, and talk about, uh, some of the feedback we've gotten. What do you got in your in your diary? Um, I don't know, man. It's a lot of stuff. You know, the uh, fact that we've gotten contact, well, I've gotten in contact with a quite a few developers and with us running a podcast and that gives us more meat, you know, on the bone versus someone not running a podcast or a website that a lot of times you can't get developers to contact you and get review codes. And, you know, Lucid Sound has a affiliate code for us. I mean, I had that to begin with, at the, you know, at the beginning when I had team our gaming going, but I think once the podcast kicked off the, uh, it's easier to advertise. It's easier to um, spread the word because you have multiple avenues now. You got the podcast, you got our website, you got YouTube, Twitter, you know, yeah. Twitch, everything now is it, it seems like it's easier for us. That's that's one thing. Well, but, what about um, like uh, from an episode standpoint? Is, does any of the episodes or any of the topics that we've kind of glossed over or dove deep into? Did, does any of that stand out for you? Um, I mean, I think they're all good, man, because every time we get down here, it's always a new game. It's always, you know, a new direction we're always bringing up well like the um i know we're borderlands for instance you know we're always talking about that but um just the evolution of the actual podcast to me is pretty badass man everything's yeah. always different that's why i like it well like so some of the stuff that uh when we first started this podcast way back when you broke your back you know the uh <laughs> <laughs> like episode three episode three it was my birthday and you broke your goddamn back. And um, so, yeah, but I, I like to look back at one of the things that I think we, we have. The reason we started this podcast is we've always been up to date to some extent as to what's going on in the gaming industry. I mean, whether it's Nintendo coming out with a new console or, you know, the, the Xbox and Sony war or whatever it is, the new game coming out, we're on top of it. You know, and a lot of people are. It's not to say that we're smarter than anybody in this industry or, or anything like that, but I believe we give good insight because we're real customers, but we're we're heavy duty customers. Like we're willing to go the extra mile. I mean, both of us are willing to shell out the money for like the PlayStation VR, no matter what the cost. Hint hint. <laughs> Only one of us is willing to shell out the money for the VR. No, I'm just kidding around. But no, but really my point is like you know, you as a collector, me as, as a, I buy tons of shit and never play it. Um, we we're in it. And I think we represent a mass quantity of people who can speak to some of this stuff where, yeah, we have a lot of games to play. We have a lot of stuff to do and we need to know, people need to know what's worth it. And so podcasts are easy 
to listen to because everyone, well, most everybody has a job and they got to drive to it and you got to listen to something while you're driving. And uh, those of us with kids, well, you tell the kids to shut up and you throw on the podcast. You know what I mean? So uh, this, this is hopefully going to start working its way in to people's lives and helping people make better decisions when buying. And, and hopefully people look at us in that light. And I want to rewind ourselves yeah, all the way. These days become like, um, almost like video game stores. Cause you yeah. know, the, the podcasters or, or the reviewers will get the game and then people will listen to the podcast and go, Oh, well they just shit on that game. I'm not buying that. Yeah. That's the whole point. of it. You, know, you got people like us that's willing to pay the 60 bucks for a game, uh-huh. play it. And then realize, damn, that was a waste of money. And then people listen to the podcast. It's like, all right, cool. Thanks guys. You just saved me 60 bucks. Exactly. You know, there, there isn't that in our generation, we had that whole go to Blockbuster and walk in and rent five, six games for, you know, $10. You know, my kids now don't have that. It's either you buy it, waste the money if it's no good, or you buy it and you actually enjoy the game. That's what, that's what I don't, I mean, there's still Redbox and all that, but Redbox doesn't have every PlayStation game in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And also, you know, when you go to Redbox, you're limited to your selection because other people are, are nabbing that stuff. I mean, we used to be able to go to to Blockbuster, like you said, and there'd be 30 versions of every game there, you know, and, and very oh, yeah. But you know that one seldomly. game you wanted to play and everybody else did too, there's like 10, 10 copies and they're all gone. You're like, son of a bitch, man. I really wanted to play this game. Yeah, and we've talked about how like Gamefly, you know, I, 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 I can't back that service up. I think the service is great if it were better yeah you know what i mean like i like the idea and the concept but every single time i've gone on to game it's because i want to have a game that i can't get a hold of you know i want to have a game i want to have the, the latest and greatest games because the reality is if you're paying 20 30 dollars for a service to have games constantly coming to you why don't you just pay for the playstation now and you know yeah. the xbox uh pass game pass because for real you're getting a lot more bang for your buck in those passes and those services. And that's all you're able to get out of Gamefly anyways, because Gamefly doesn't offer you the latest and greatest games. You have to wait months for those games to come, to be able to, to be there. So what's the point? And that's, that's the kind of stuff that we, we dive into. But I, I look back to like episode five, right? We were talking about the Super NES classic console, and it was just a dream at that point that the PS1 classic console was going to be due to come out. And we talked a lot about how, um, you know, what is the price going to look like? What would be worth it? How, you know, how is it going to sell? All of those things. And if you go back and listen to that episode, every single one of our concerns have proven to be correct. And now you can buy that damn thing for 30 bucks. So, yeah. You know what I mean? And and I think that, not that I want to say, told you so, it's not about that. It's really just about we're honest in our opinion. We're not going to go say, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. Go buy it unless we believe it. And we'll correct ourselves when we're wrong. Give you a great example. Not too long ago, both of us were saying, anthem, anthem, anthem. We were super so excited about it. Joe, what's your experience on Anthem? We both bought it. What'd you, how, how long did you play that one for? Oh, man, I played that for about a good two minutes. It was boring, <laughs> man. It's, just, it's like, you know, it had the same feel as Destiny, but Destiny's a super fun game, but after you, a certain level, it's the same old BS over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, when, um, you know, when you and I met, we were, I was really heavy into Neverwinter, and I loved it. Right. I I really enjoyed the time I spent in Neverwinter and I don't regret it. But at the same time, there comes a point in games like that games with a zero ending. There is no ending to Neverwinter. The, I guess you could conceive an end game in the idea that you've gotten everything you wanted. Right. But there is no finite decision making like it's done and there's no going forward. And so when you play a game like that, and I, I look at like Jason playing World of Warcraft or, or whatever, when, you're, when your brain is done with that game, you feel like you've wasted a lot of time. But when you're done oh, a yeah. game that has an ending, you feel like there's a success. And that's a classic example. You know what I mean? Like, boom, there you go. Destiny, you know, Destiny 1 anyways, uh, Division 1, another example of that, where the game has a lot of promise. It's fun to play. 
there comes a point where you're like, what is this? What is the purpose of this? And Anthem, uh, while it looks beautiful and they should have just broadcasted it as a uh, Iron Man, the game. I mean, if that was Iron Man, the game and they put a real storyline around it, we have a completely different situation, but the storyline is purposefully not finite and the gameplay is dragging and from all the the reviews people are saying there is no way to get what you want in that game you're not satisfied you're never satisfied and as we talked about maybe two weeks ago it's it's possible that they put algorithms in the game so that you're never satisfied so that you're always feeling like you need more and the hope was that it would drive you to to play more and spend more but it backfired on them this round guaranteed they're using the data so that the next time they do this they'll do it right so that we don't know what's happening and we spend more money but it was an odd gamble because they've been playing this or building this game for so long and um we were both super excited about it i mean again the graphics are great the gameplay seems fun but if there's no point in the game well then playing it for 10 minutes is about all you need yeah pretty much it really is and the cool thing about vr is that a lot of those games in vr that's it, right? There's a couple of games like Richie's Plank Experience. You get a board from your garage and uh, you, you actually walk on that board and in the game, it looks like you're walking off of uh, the side of a high-rise building and you're, you're walking on a tightrope. And so you add the, to the experience by truly standing on a two-by-four. And, uh, but honestly, you do that once or twice and you're done. I mean, maybe you go back to it, but that's not a game you play for four hours. You know, you play it for five, ten minutes, and you're done. The experience is over. It's kind of like, uh, Joe, you used to go to arcades, right? Oh, yeah. You're not going to spend 40 hours at an arcade. You're going to spend no. a couple of dollars, some quarters, and then the next person's going to come behind you. Anthem, a round of Anthem, maybe a quest in Anthem would be perfect at an arcade machine because it's cool to look at. The gameplay is good. But it's the long run. People, they're trying to build these games so that we're sucking every penny out of our wallets. And uh, it just, it doesn't work when you're paying 60 bucks before you even get that game. That they want to get more out of you. The whole goal is to get more out of you. It was just, it was a big letdown after you start playing it. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So, so, during the time, let's just rehash here. We started our podcast back in Ju July, mid-July of uh, 2018, and our initial talks, we talked a bit about uh, what we do, what we like to play. Fortnite was the huge craze. We were, we were both pretty heavily into Fortnite at that point, but we were super excited about um, the uh, Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 4 coming out. We were excited about the potential for Battlefield 5 and uh, the potential for their battle royale. At this point, we hadn't seen some of the other battle royales that had come out, um, obviously Apex Legends and things. And the buildup of the week to week talking about Black Ops 4, and then, what was it, October or November, it finally hit. And uh, we were just, we were super excited. But along the way, we had a couple of guests. So before Black Ops even debuted, we had uh, Calzone OP. He was uh, the okay. Twitch streamer. And, you know, I've, I've, I've caught up with him a little bit. I've, I've watched him. He's, he's never really breaking, broken away from the pack, but he still streams on a regular basis. He still gets, you know, 20, 30 people watching him every time he goes on there. And uh, he's doing all right. And he's still pretty good at Fortnite. But just like a lot of people, he dips into some of these other games. Um, but then we had that round table. We had Jason, JT, and Andy. And we talked a lot of, about a lot of different things uh, during that. Um, but, but Joe, uh, we, we got into so much, and then boom, all of a sudden, Black Ops 4. And that's consumed your gaming life for the past, let's see, four, six months. So, Joe, I've, o I've always known you as, you know, the, this multiplayer Call of Duty. Like, when we first met, uh, Ghosts, I think you were playing, and then um, we were super excited about World War II and all that. So now that battle royale is the thing i mean you can go on twitch or wherever and everyone's playing battle royale it's uh seems to be a you know it's a completely different concept from what we're used to but have you what do you think of the multiplayer for um black ops 4 and have you had a chance to dive into that uh we played a little bit of it man we didn't um we didn't like the way it felt 
I played different. Uh, the weapons are a whole lot different on um, on that on, on multiplayer for that for that game. So we played it for a little bit, and then uh, we dove in and started playing Blackout, and we really like it. I like the way it feels. I like the way they uh, up they keep updating it. I like the fact that you know people complained and they updated and actually fixed certain things that needed fixing. But then you know you got you also got people that complain about fixing stuff that they don't need to fix, like um, buff or a uh, nerfing sniper rifles and stuff like that, which pisses me off because it's a sniper rifle. But um, I do like how they changed the looting system. I like how they. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a really good feeling game. I like the way it feels, like the weapons, um, the armor. They they fixed it to make it where it doesn't actually make that much of a difference. Which is something that anymore. you brought up probably four months ago that it, they needed to do that. Yeah. So it's good to hear that they did well. I was hoping they would just get rid of the armor and then have max health at two hundred. That way, it's who gets the drop on who. So if you get the drop on somebody and they have level two or level three armor, they do have that one to two seconds of reaction time seems like to get around. But if the armor was completely gone, then you, it'd be a different game. Yeah. And what would you say? I mean, I know it's it's hard to think like this, but say battle Royale never came out, say blackout never happened. Uh, do you see that the black ops Four multiplayer was satisfactory upgrade from the last one and, and from world war two or is it hard to gauge well, because we have this new it's hard, game? It's hard, it's hard to gauge, man, because it's all so much different. I mean, you can go back and, you know, the original Call of Duty 4, when it came back out remastered, we yep. played that for forever because that game was badass. That's just a really good game. I wish um, Modern Warfare 2, they would remaster that one or they'd remaster Ghost or, you know, just remaster the the really good ones. Oh man, if they if they remaster Call of Duty, of, I know people get tired of remastered games, but no. that's the whole part of you know these games remaster the good ones, and people are still gonna buy them. People were satisfied with the remaster of Modern Warfare One. I just think that because there's so many games out, and because many people had already played the hell out of that, the population was not as high as it could have been. Plus, they made you pay for it as an add-on to uh, whatever crazy Call of Duty they had at the time, Advanced Warfare or something. So yeah, if it was, it was a, warfare. if you could have bought that out the gate for twenty bucks, which is what it should have been at that point, um, or maybe thirty at the at the the most, um, you would have seen a bigger population, and it would have probably persisted for a bit more. But greed is all over the place, man. It is everywhere, and you see it. I think the biggest problem I mean, that's, with, how, that's how the companies make their money, man. They can't do it by it, making it is. Cheap it is because they're, you know we're working a lot as you said at the intro here we're working a lot with developers and things and I've had a chance to to talk to directly to some of these developers who they're the ones spending their cash to make the game that they want to make and there's a difference between that and dealing with a developer who's hired gun to make a game that somebody else wants them to make so in that sense there's a lot less um investment the investment is more along the lines of keeping a job and enjoying the money you're getting paid. And it's not necessarily, and I'm not going to, this is not a blanket statement here, but it's not necessarily about the love for the development of the particular thing you're working on. I mean, they may come along and say, you're a good developer. I want you to make my little pony the game. You know what I mean? And that may not be your forte, but you might be able to do it and you're not going to play it when it's over. But um, when you are working or, or talking with a developer who used a platform as their passion project, um, a lot more goes into that. And so you see, I guess the, the point is I'm trying to make is um, when it comes to like Call of Duty, right? Yeah, you know what you're going to get in a Call of Duty game. And because a corporation or a series of corporations in, in Call of Duty's case, they're making decisions. You have good developers that are making these games, but it's so cookie cutter. Um, I honestly can't tell you much of a difference between all the different Call of Duty games. Yes, one of them allows you to slide while you gun. One of them allows you to, you know, run across the walls. But at the end of the day, you know what you're getting in a Call of Duty experience. And it's been so dominant. And there's very little 
love that can go into it is my point like very little personal Hell, getting, i can't really tell the difference between any of these battle royale games though they're all the same i mean think about it you had you had you know h1n1 or h1z1 or whatever the hell it was came out mm-hmm. and you know it started the whole process and then PUBG came out and then Fortnite took what PUBG had and added a little more spice to it and then you know you got Blackout, I will disagree with you on on incorpor- it being the same. Incorporates that. Uh, I would challenge you on the Fortnite aspect only because the reason you hate Fortnite and the reason a lot of people hate Fortnite is the building. But when you watch a tournament or when you go in and play it, that is the point of that game. You know what I mean? Like there is no competitive Fortnite player who doesn't build. Right. Every single well, one of, of course. Them. I mean, that's what you have to do. That I mean. That's why I don't like the game. I just don't. I stopped playing Fortnite and the fact that it just, it felt, to me, it feels sluggish, man. Like when you shoot, it doesn't feel. Well, that's like whatever. It's uh, the same. All the. All the, the bloom. Uh, they call it the bloom. You yeah. Know, the, and it's terrible. The pros that hate the game, that's the reason they hate the game. And who knows if they'll ever change that or, or fix it or whatever the term is. But uh, the pros that don't care about that, the pros that, that push past that, are making millions <laughs> you know it's as simple as that there or hundreds of thousands or thousands or, or hundreds i mean they since you've left the game they've continuously changed the game they've changed it every week they've made enhancements or dehancements or however you want to put it and they've pissed off the community they've made the community happy they've pushed forward they've pulled back they've done a lot of stuff but right now they're doing a 30 million dollar open tournament for anybody to qualify. You could jump in today. And if you're good enough, boom, you could be in the running. And so whether you love them or hate them, I love what they're doing for the industry. And we talked a little bit about it, I think it was last week, where they've changed the nature of the game. And uh, on one of the podcasts I listened to, it's the Fortnite podcast, uh, they, they had a really good point in that prior to Fortnite, it wasn't even possible to think that you could demand the developers reply to you on Reddit and and actually get a response. Like, if you're pissed off at the game, you go to Reddit and you make a post, and if it's a decent enough, a worthy enough topic, they're going to comment on it. And they, they have to hire social people. Now, they've done this for a long time with all these game companies, but not at the level at which Fortnite has brought. The community has brought such a demanding, like, we need updates every week. We need new things. We need things taken away every week. You must be changing it. And that costs a lot of damn money to work with Sony and Xbox and all these different companies to push the software and get it validated and all that. All these updates you get aren't free. You know, they have to work with... Yeah, but that's um, the one thing I, that I have, a trouble, I have trouble with when it comes to um, Fortnite. They listen to their people, but it's like they listen to everybody. And they change it all the time, and they never they never change something, and it works. They'll change something, and then they'll add something in, and it breaks like nine other things. But look at and Google. Look, two look weeks at- later, they'll fix that one problem, and then like fifteen things is broken. <laughs> and by the time they finish figure out what they have, what they broke, they have put seventeen different elements into the game. Yeah. And everybody's just like, "What the hell, man? Figure it out. Add a couple things. Wait a couple weeks." add something way to cut but they're adding every day like you're saying and they're always breaking something and it, it I know, drives but, me nuts but and i'm with you but you also weren't purchasing a ton of skins you know so so they don't care <laughs> you know what i mean they don't exactly, care about your exactly opinion. that's what that gets on my nerves too is yeah 100 you know, they're 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 more worried about skins and back bling and all this other bullshit but but joe they don't even, to be they don't fair even, they don't care about the game no more to be fair to the business model, they're providing not only a free game, it's technically free, you don't have to do any of that, uh, no matter what, they, they, anything you pay for in that game does not provide an enhancement to the ability to compete in that game. So I think in that aspect, in that instance, um, it's very respectable that they have a model that caters to people who pay for that kind of shit because that's their business model. They wouldn't be a multi-billion dollar company if they charged thirty dollars for the game and gave everyone free skins every week. It's different because. Well, I understand that. What I'm getting at is the fact they 
they're to me they're more worried about the cosmetics. All they want to do is make money. They 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 say they're making these adjustments to to enhance the game, but in reality they're just throwing shit together. But they're going to release seventeen different skins. Yeah, the, and those the reason are going to be perfect. Nothing's wrong with the skins. I mean, they're going to be fun, flawless every time. But the seventeen things in the game they add, you're going to have a gun that shoots squirrely as hell because they didn't actually figure out the you know how it shot or whatever you know they're going to add new mountain but you can see through it because they didn't actually do the rendering process right yeah you know, I'm all with that you stuff is kind of on, on the bugs and defects i i agree that they need to be taken care of but i do also i have to stop and kind of what we were talking about off the line the other day about like reviewing and when you have a game that's free as opposed to a game that costs money uh the content that they provide and the you know the satisfaction of whatever it is yes the building can be difficult for people who don't get it or don't care to to practice that but but a uh, a reality here is that um they wouldn't be able to do any of that if it wasn't for the funding they get from it and so i get that's that's what the big wigs or whoever is focusing on because that's the money maker that's how they can throw a $30 million tournament. But they're throwing a $30 million tournament. That's given back like no game has ever given back. And it's coming straight from the Epic, you know, company. They're the ones hosting these tournaments and setting up these pretty awesome streams. I know you don't watch them too much, but I, I tend to um, really enjoy it. Kind of like a football season where when they're broadcasting a Fortnite event, I tune in. It's just, even if it's just in the background while I work or something, it's something I enjoy and I follow it. And so I'm, you know, I'm, I'm seeing new, new players. And, uh, this tournament here has people who are under 17 or under 18. So I'm rooting for like, you know, people who I see stream and, and underdogs and kids. And, you know, I, I would love to see a 14 year old kid walk away with like $10 million. I think that that would be phenomenal. Cause I look at my son and I want him to believe he can do anything he ever wants to. And if this is what he wants to do, well, by golly, when he's 17 years old, you know, hopefully he's as good enough as, as these other kids to be able to do stuff like this. So it's, it's opened up an avenue to esports and to what you and I would have always dreamed of. If Fortnite never came along, there would still be Counter-Strike, there'd still be League of Legends, but esports would not be the same. And so, love it or hate it, they've changed the game, and I still stand by the fact that if you and I never stopped we'd be up there in these tournaments and we'd be doing hella good. And we'd possibly... We, we, you know, we probably would. I mean, I was, I was, I was holding my own in Fortnite. I mean, it, you, uh, know, it, you were 10 times better games. than me. And I don't know if you recall, but I think it was episode eight. I'm the best ever. So... Yeah, you're right. You know what I mean? If you, if you factor that in, how can you be 10 well, times you know, better is, than the this best? This is the thing, though. So, like, you, you, you look at Fortnite, and I want to say we've had... I would say between me and my wife winning... Me and my son winning, me and my daughter and son winning, and me and Adam winning, me and you winning, all the different wins. I may I may have 50. Mm -hmm. Maybe. You know what I mean? I don't have a lot. Now, you go look at Blackout, and we have like 38 duo wins. And yep. we have like X amount of squad wins, and then I have a solo win. You know, all these other things. The aspect of the game, to me, Blackout is more... I wouldn't say realistic, but it's more, you know, it's, it's more, it, well, I guess I can say it's more realistic because I mean, it's, you know, it's more you're, realistic than Fortnite, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and that's what appeals to me the most. I mean, Fortnite is fun. I give it that. It's just. It's frustrating. I don't know, it just, Fortnite is fun, the, the build, but, but the building is what pisses me off though, dude. I mean, I can shoot you 19 times and then you have one health and you throw up a wall and I don't know. It, it just, it got real annoying. But going back to your original point, why we why we dove down this is that um, you were saying that they're all kind of the same. And when you look at H one Z one, PUBG, Blackout, and then Battlefield Five, they're all trying to be a war game, you know, uh, with a realistic aspect to it. And they all do it a little differently, and they all have their own reasons to enjoy it. You know, H one Z one started getting into the different character skins and things because they they recognize that a Fortnite is, uh, you know making a, a killing with that and then i noticed the last time i was in blackout that the skins are starting to be a little sillier a little bit more eccentric people like that they like to be able to um self-identify or 
stand out from a crowd, uh, especially gamers. It's one thing I've noticed, and I think that's why Fortnite is so popular, because you can do the dance, or you know, you can you can uh, get the skin that nobody else has, or that everyone has, or whatever, and you can participate in ways that most kids aren't comfortable participating. And I'll give you a, just a, a, a certain example: is my son is not okay. So Jagger turns eight this weekend, right? And that's just crazy to even think about that I have an eight year old. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> happy birthday to you. So to um, you. But but he's shy when it comes to being around other people. He's not shy when he's around people he loves and knows, right? If he's around his friends. But dude, we went to the the uh, the fair the other day, county fair, and for no reason at all. There was a there was a banjo band just playing banjo music to people coming into the fair, and Jacker just walks up to him and starts doing the floss perfectly to them, like these old men with beards. And no, he can't. You guys gotta go. So like he just walks up without fear, you know, because he's decent at the floss. He's pretty good at the floss. He just gets out there and starts doing it. He knows it's funny. He's just trying to be silly, and then another kid sees him probably twice his age comes running over and starts flossing next to him and then another kid sees from a mile away and starts flossing from a mile away and it's like there's a unity as silly and as dumb as us old people think it is and we look at that and be like that's awkward or whatever it's it's letting kids communicate in a way that's different than even what we found to be different like when we were like holy shit we can text message or we can use aim instant messenger like oh my god these kids are communicating on a on a subconscious level now like oh you play Fortnite here i do the floss too and so um i don't know it's it's cool to see but it, it's it's you know your son your daughter they get into it they love it there's something every there every day bro every day, every day. There, there's something there for them i think it it left us behind us older generation because of the catering to the skins as opposed to the gameplay but i'll tell you what man if you see a good streamer, if you go watch Tifu for an hour, you're going to be impressed whether you like the game or hate it because of the skill gap and the quality of play that someone like Ninja or Tifu or uh, Dr. Lupo or any of these guys that are in the pro scene, it's, it's like watching a good football game to me. It is. It's, it, because it is competitive. It I is. mean, it, it is interesting. It is. I mean, it's just... And, and that's what know, man. these Fortnite other five games... Well, that's what these other battle royales can't provide. They've all tried Apex, all of them. You can put on a good tournament, right? But when you're watching Call of Duty and you're watching Apex and you're watching Battle Five, Battlefield Five, it's the same thing to to the to the viewer. The only thing you get different in the game is possibly who is the picture on the screen if they're doing a broadcast, right, with all the different players. In in Fortnite, the map is the same. But what happens, the history of that game is different every single round uh, the, as they, they broadcast it in a really cool way. And you can see the history of the battles as they build out. You know, the buildings and the, the destruction is significant enough, and especially in these, these high-level games, to where it never looks the same. And, and it's always something different. And the, the way that the building aspect plays into these competitive events, um, obviously the better builder usually wins, but not always. And you see some things that just you couldn't even think to do. And these people are doing it in such milliseconds that the decisions that they make that either get them the win or the loss. And so I think that that, oh, yeah. that aspect, the it storytelling aspect, makes it for a more competitive viewing ex experience. But, um, but anyways, we could talk about that all night. We've talked about it at least 30 out of the 50 episodes. So, um, Well, I'll tell you a Battle Royale that caught my attention. Not my car. Hey, I told you about that a couple Did weeks. Look, I knew that was going to be your Battle Royale. <laughs> Dude, I looked at that. I was like, holy shit. It's like Twisted, it's like twisted Metal on uh, speed, honestly. Yep. And, and they touted well, it as And that's something that no one fastest. thinks about. That was, the original, that was the original Battle Royale. Twisted yes, Metal. It, yes, it was. Wasn't that I mean, in... They um, just took uh, Wreck It Ralph, two? Didn't they do that? What's that? That's what the, in Wreck It Ralph two. That did you see Wreck It Ralph two? Yeah, that. Oh, where they went to that that. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, that the was fun. pretty much. That was pretty much not my car, honestly. That's that's. Well, it. they they touted that. I guess the, the the creators of that 
whoever wrote that scene, they used twisted metal as a basis for, um, you know, the arena and the event and um, the chase and all that and the destruction. So, um, oh yeah. yeah, there's no doubt that not my car was uh, <laughs> was based off of the concept of twisted metal or influenced by twisted metal. Oh, it had to have been. It had to have been. I mean, and then destruction derby looks, too, right? Yeah, destruction derby was a good one. But I don't know, man. I'm just I'm, I'm I don't know. It's kind of I kind of get burnt out of the battle royales after a while because we did play. We did play Fortnite for a long time. We've been playing Blackout for a long time. It just, again, it goes back to that never-ending aspect of games. And I don't know. I've been playing. I've been playing some racing again. I've been playing some Borderlands. Getting ready for uh, September thirteenth for Borderlands three. So, so I know that we um we don't want to make this one a super long episode. We're about forty minutes in. So let's let's use that as a good segue to the final topic here and. And the purpose of the point, like why we created the podcast. So we're we're burnt out. You're burnt out on some of these. I know I am on some of these games. Yeah. Uh, Fortnite, I'm not playing it every day. And um, actually, I haven't been playing a lot of games because of all my surgery and the moving and one thing after another. So when I do get back into gaming on a heavily, you know, on a daily basis, it's going to be breaking up this backlog. And so I know I keep adding to the backlog, but I have some games that I, I need to play. God of War 3 is is one of them it's it's one of the next ones but then you, you know you make me buy borderlands and then all of a sudden i go all nostalgic and i can't put it down so oh yeah so what's aside from some of the newer games you bought think of one or two games that you have on your system ready to play you haven't played them yet what are, are what are you going to tackle in the second half of 2019 in the next 50 episodes what are some of the backlog games you plan or, or hope to dive into and beat? Oh, uh, that's well, the Crew 2 is one of them. I have that on my system. I've played a little bit. I've played probably a good 10 hours of it, but that's just scratching the surface, man. I need yeah. to get in there and finish that game up. Um, I need to go back and play uh, Need for Speed Payback and finish up uh, my last. I only have three trophies left, and mm-hmm. I'll platinum that game. I need to go in there and get those. Uh, let's see. Uh, well... One game that's gonna be, I'm gonna be playing here for for too much longer is um, Mortal Kombat 11. It comes out this year. I'm gonna put that at the front of my backlog because I'm gonna run through that game. Okay. It's actually coming out in uh, five days, so well, April 23rd. I can't wait to play that, man. When I go to the backlogexposed.com, right, and I uh, at the beginning of of the podcast when we first started way back when, I built out, you know. Um, some of our backlog items, right? And on yours, you had the Crew 2 and Borderlands 2 because uh, you were planning on jumping back into Borderlands 2 at the time. The Crew 2 is still on your backlog, as is God of War on mine. I say, uh, let's make a commitment for the second half of this uh, 100 episodes because we're going to make it to 100. Let's have a... <laughs> let's see who can beat their backlog first. Uh, Crew 2 or God of War 3. And um, oh, man. also... If you haven't gotten onto the website, jump on and uh, up in the top. Oh, hang on a second. I got I to gotta bring something up. Yes. It reminded me when I looked, at, I looked at my thing that you hacked, you asshole, and put Assassin's Creed on it. Well, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Go so on check, and vote. Check this out. Little, little, uh, little news here. Everyone knows what happened uh, you know, up in Paris, the uh, Notre Dame yeah. cathedral caught on fire. Did you know that they are taking... Assassin's Creed. Um, I, I'm not 100 percent sure which game it, which one it is. I want to say it's Unity, maybe. I believe it's They're Unity. They're actually yeah. taking Assassin's Creed Unity. They're going to take the game. They've already contacted Ubisoft, and they've already donated five hundred thousand dollars to help, um, you know, redo the the um, cathedral. But they're using Assassin's Creed Unity to actually go in, look at the game. Because the details in that game is as close as you can get to what you have in person. And they're going to recreate the cathedral using that game. How crazy is that? That's a phenomenal thing to do. I mean, the, the game's from 2014. Uh, the graphics are really good, even, you know, four or five years later. But I mean, just as a developer, dude, like... No, I'm with you, you 100%. You, That's you awesome. These, you create these games and you're like, oh yeah, we got good graphics. But then you're like, something you know, crazy happens where it catch you know, a, a very well-known piece of history all of a sudden is in the shitter 
and they call up Ubisoft and it's like, hey man, we need to we need the developers that had Assassin's Creed Unity to help us out with this. We're gonna use your game to recreate our freaking cathedral. Like, dude, yeah, I bet that's... that was. That's one I bet of the those things. Guys were like, what? Yeah, that's one of the things that um, Assassin's Creed. I know that you you're not a huge fan of the the game genre, but um, I've always appreciated games like that. Even the Division One, where you're walking through New York City and you can pull up Google Maps and literally from any angle in Google Maps, you have a one to one copy. I mean, some buildings have been removed and stuff, and and some of the building shapes and stuff are a little different, but almost every major landmark is there and when you're going through rome or you know all these different uh, paris and all these different uh, cities that assassin's creed has put together um, the major landmarks that still exist today are flawless they're flawless and they look i mean i think back to like the xbox 360 playing assassin's creed and some of the the quality even back then was just amazing and now even more um the the latest couple of assassin's creeds have just been off the charts as far as the, the visual quality. Um, but some details here. If you go to Ubisoft.com, uh, you can find your way to getting your free copy, or you can just Google it. Uh, from April 17th, 10 a.m., which is the other yesterday, to April 25th at 3 a.m., your local time, you can download Assassin's Creed Unity on PC for free, and you'll own it forever on your Uplay Games library. So you do have to use Uplay, and it is a PC-only version, but by doing this, uh, the proceeds that would have gone to them are going to go to, um, or they're going to take the money that, that would have, you know, say it was 30 bucks or whatever, it's going to go towards uh, the restoration and reconstruction of the cathedral. And I think that's a really cool thing to see a company that doesn't have to do that, to see them do it. Whoever's funding it oh, or yeah, whatever, sure. it's just, um, it's cool for us as gamers and it's cool for uh, Paris to have a community come together and do that so um that's cool to bring that up i appreciate that and uh, i think that that's uh, oh yeah i just uh, thought about that and i saw on the, on the game so um, yeah man other than that i think uh we'll uh i'll uh, jump on the crew too here the next couple of weeks and get that taken care of and i want to wrap this up with um i'm just going to run through them and we can dive into it more uh next next podcast but um dreams early access is 30 bucks on the playstation store right now And if you're not familiar with Dreams, go back to one of our earlier episodes or just Google it. But it's a really innovative game made by uh, Media Molecule. And it's supposed to be one of the next big things. And I'll tell you what, I had access to the private beta and the creation tools and what you can make in that if you have the time are amazing, amazing. And the community as a whole gets to borrow from everybody. So if you make something, or you upload a sound, or you record your voice, somebody else can take that, they can distort it, they can play with it, they can insert it into theirs. You can take somebody's game and somebody's scene, and you can manipulate it, and make your own game. So people are making phenomenal things in this game, so you don't even have to go create. It's really Mario Maker for everything. It's really cool. So you can get the early... steroids. Yeah, and, and you can get this early access version for 30 bucks and while i don't want to say everyone dive in and do it uh, because it's not out yet if you're interested it's worth the price because i know that there's content being made you can go tinker with it you can help them make it better and if you buy the 30 dollars early access when it comes out in full version you'll get the full version uh for free at that point and so if the full version 60 bucks you'll have saved 30 bucks right out the gate for a game that has been it's almost like a um it's almost like a Kickstarter, if you think about it. Correct, yeah. And, and they already, you already know what's that, happening. They're probably going to take that 30 bucks that people invest initially and yeah. use it for development and then be like, oh, well, you already you know, you paid us the 30 bucks? Well, the game's already one, done. That's all you're going to have to pay. The, the, the development's already done. I, I think it's more, honestly, an advertising ploy to, to drum up uh, positive reviews because I played the, the early access felt like a complete game. And I'm sure that there was stuff that wasn't there, but uh, I can talk about it now because it's over. Um, the, it, it, I played about 10 different creations and all of them were significantly different enough and could have been complete experiences. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, what you can do, I can tell you already in the, the beta, the private beta that I did is, uh, phenomenal. So I would say the 30 bucks is worth it from what I played. 
but I don't ever see, and that's with me saying I don't ever see myself going in there to make anything. I would just use what other people have built. Uh, maybe I'll make something, and I definitely am interested in the um, the music aspect. Like you can go create your own soundtracks and sounds, and that's the cool. That's the thing that I thought was pretty badass. Yeah, man. these kids are going to be making crazy ass soundtracks. It's nuts what you can do in there. So go YouTube that if you haven't. Just Dreams Music Maker. Uh, there's some really cool, you know, maybe an hour long video that the company put out where you can watch them go make a soundtrack and stuff and see how it's done. And you can see like, wow, in, in 20, 30 minutes, you can have a ridiculous series of sounds and stuff that you could put into the game. And it's so intuitive how you do it. So um, look out for that. Uh, some stuff that we're, I definitely want to dive into next podcast, Joe, is uh, the PlayStation 5. Some details have come out. The um, developers and oh, the... Man. Uh, I was just about to tell you some one little crazy fact about the PlayStation 5 before you get too far into it. You tell me first, and then I'll I'll top onto it with some stuff if, unless uh, you catch it all. Go so ahead. I read, you know, I read through the whole PlayStation 5, the 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 the, um, the 8K, all that stuff. That didn't impress me. What impressed me was this right here: the PlayStation 5 has the it's going to have an SSD hard drive. Yeah. And they they used. Um, spider-man as a guinea pig basically so if you haven't played spider-man the maps the map is massive and the rendering process of the map takes takes a little bit for the ps4 15 and, seconds uh, to be exact. yeah 15 seconds so they have fast travel in that game well the fast travel gets you obviously from point a to point b without going through the city that takes you 15 seconds on the ps4 to get on the train and the train takes 15 seconds to... It's basically loading your next area. With the PS5, it takes 0.8 seconds. Not even a second. And the map is already rendered and loaded and you're playing. Yeah, and so there's no need for that whole cutscene. By the time you hit X to fast travel, you're already there. It is going to be ridiculous. And I can't wait for the PlayStation 6 where they're like, Can you believe it took 0.8 seconds? Now, all you have to do is think about it, and you're there. So, yeah, that's a significant it's, difference. It's by, by, uh, and, and I know that SSDs have been around for some time now, and so it's not going to shock the world that they might be going that way. But they have actually, and if you read some of the press releases and stuff, they have utilized a specific type of SSD and software that can capture um, the best of what these SSDs can, can do. So it's... it's uh, they're saying that this PlayStation 5 will be a, out the gate, be able to do better or compete with the top of the line computers. Now, they always say that about new generation stuff and computers are always faster to capitalize on the new technology. But, you know, I just built my own new computer and it, you know, it didn't even have every single thing I wanted and it was over $1,500, uh, you know, and that was you still using some parts from my other computer. Uh, when you can buy a console, get everything you need, and it works, and it's this fast and, and stuff, that's what people are hoping for. Uh, but the other key thing, Joe, backwards compatibility. They're already calling Yo, it out. That's a, that's a big one, man. That's a guarantee. They already said that. Yeah, that's, and if you go a, back to... That's a game changer right there. If you, if you go back to episode 20 or 25 or something like that, when we were talking about this and what we hoped for, that was our number one, I think. That was one of our number one things was backwards compatibility because we have these backlogs. Everyone has these backlogs now with, with all the games you get for free from the services that you pay for on a monthly basis. And, um, and we'll always have these backlogs. Let's be honest, right? We're gamers. Um, I was talking with my, uh, my stepbrother the other day, and he's like, I play one game a year, so I just look for the best one that meets my needs, and I play it a little bit here and there. He's not a gamer. He just likes to play games every once in a while. But you and I are like, if there's a game that, that tickles our, our fancy, we're, we're getting it, whether we're going to play it or not, because we'll keep it on that backlog yeah. till we're ready. And so it's actually a benefit to us, I, because I'll buy the PlayStation 5 day one if I can play my three 400 oh, games Yeah, on I'm going to have it day one, just for the fact that you can, you're not losing nothing, you're only gaining at yeah. that point. And, and uh, one step further, this is going to be benefit both you and I. The PlayStation VR is also going to be backwards compatible on the PS5. Well, you're still pushing this VR, aren't you? <laughs> you're, dude, I'm going to make you. I told you I'm going to hold a gun to your head when you get here. But um, 
you know, the the uh, the current PlayStation VR box and the headset is going to work on the PlayStation 5 day one. So that is huge because that catalog is, I think, 100 to 200 games. So PlayStation 5 is going to have uh, what it needs to start off, especially if you can play your, say, Spider-Man game and it loads faster and stuff. So uh, ray tracing, that's going to be big because that helps games uh, handle how light, sound, and everything travels in the game, and it's going to be able to to do that in a more realistic fashion and reduce some of the processing time needed uh, to handle it. Usually, you know, if you have a mirror in a game and you're trying to produce the light that bounces off that mirror, you as a developer have to build that from multiple angles and multiple sources, but ray tracing allows the the concept of light bouncing off of a mirror to happen naturally within the development cycle. So now they don't have to develop for a mirror. They can say, this is a mirror and the light will ray trace off that mirror. Same with sound um, walls in a game. The sound will know to bounce off the walls properly, just like light would because of how this ray tracing works. And so hopefully they're saying that this system will allow for better sound travel and better light travel to make it more realistic and easier on the developers, but also as gamers, right? When I mean, you it watch can't a lot get of much more realistic, man. This is getting this is getting a little ridiculous. True, but but also when you're playing a Call of Duty or you're playing a Fortnite, for example, one of the biggest complaints you see on streamers is the sound, right? You can never tell where it's coming from. Uh, yeah. You know, they they try like hell, but I guess it's very difficult, especially when you look at all the different headsets and the different sound systems and and all that to 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 nail it. But they're working on that, and they're saying that the ability to detect above, below, left, or right is going to be premier. It's going to be, like, you know, really good here because of the ray tracing and some of the, the software upgrades and uh, uh, hardware upgrades that they're putting into the PlayStation 5. I hope that to be true, and um, who knows? Maybe it'll be more realistic and, and awesome. You said you weren't interested in 8K graphics, but I think that that's a significant jump in i think when the playstation 4 came out or 3 what are, what are we on for the ps4 came out um 4k was just starting up or, or hadn't even come out yet and um i mean we're i think we're kind of a we're still like probably three or four years away honestly man from for 4k being i mean from 8k being the, the norm i know but I mean, you know no, people laughed when we got a terabyte hard drive yet. and you know people laughed for Four years ago when 4k was a thing they were like who needs it but i'll tell you when my place my tv is playing a 4k movie as opposed to a, a 1080p movie i can tell the difference now not always but um they can be significant so 8k i don't know will i ever own an 8k tv guaranteed guaranteed i will at one point or another but uh um, I, i'm satisfied with 1080p personally <laughs> I don't, i'm not a stickler on that uh so much but it's cool that they're they're already saying we're putting this on the table. They're they're already giving away some of the major details, and so. Um, but I know the big one for you and I is that PSVR being able to work on. Oh um, yeah, man! I'm gonna get it. <laughs> if you could nab that thing for 150, there's no doubt you should. Uh, that is a, a no brainer. Um, I don't think that's gonna last too long. But check your local Walmart, folks, because uh, bundles are out there, 150 a piece. So. Um, one last thing. I'm, I'm going to oh, two last things. Two last things. One, uh, on The Verge, there's an a article that came out today about Lucid Sound. I know we talk about it a lot. There's a reason we talk about it. It's not just because of that, uh, that promo code, Team Mimar Gaming, for 20% off, but it's also about the quality. And I've been using this thing. I'm going to do a review, but I can say right now, one, my headset lasted over 20 hours on the battery. Okay. I, I, I can say that now. Uh, the LS41s are real. They're real deal. Joe's been right. I'm not just talking shit. Uh, they feel comfortable. When I have them on my head while I'm playing, and then I stop playing, and then I turn and use my computer, I forget they're on my head. And I just sit there with these things on my head, whereas every other headset I've ever had, it's like the second I'm done, I can't have them on my head because I know that they're there, and I got to take them off. So they are comfortable. Uh, but Joe talked about the, the dials and the, the way that it handles the sound. And I was just browsing through today on gaming news, and there's an article about it. The volume control headphone dials are a smart solution for a nagging gaming issue. So check out The Verge. Uh, you know, maybe I'll tweet this out or something, post it on our, uh, I'll, you know what, I'll, I'll post it on our website. 
thebacklogexposed.com. Um, I'll post a link to this article, but it goes into exactly what Joe's been talking about and how these dials, um, you know, I, I have uh, the, the Turtle Beaches, I think, handled it better than the Astros. Uh, but on the Turtle Beach, you have uh, a volume button for your game sound and a volume button for your uh, chat sound. You have a volume button up and down for both. And so you have to tap the button. Doo -doo 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 beep. You're at the max. And then you tap the button down. Doo -doo 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 beep. You're at the lowest. And you do that for both the things. Well, then you get the Astros and the Astros have this two buttons. That's it. And then if you go up on one, you're going to game sound. And if you're going down on the other button or pressing the other button, you're going to chat sound. And you have to figure out the mix that you want that complements both the, the chat sound and the game sound. And it's such a pain in the ass. I, I really, I hate that. My son, eight, can't figure it out for the life of him. I've taught him, I can barely figure it out, how to get the perfect combination of sound. Because sometimes you don't want to hear the people, right? But there's no like indicator to tell you how far you've gone. You don't know if you're 50% in or or 80% until you hear the sound. Well, lucid sound, you have a turn dial on both sides. The turn dial is the real deal. It's the what you need on a gaming headset. You can instantly go from zero to 100 or 100 to zero. And you know exactly where it's at. And like you know exactly you, where it's no at. guessing. And the same thing for the chat volume. You have an in, independent chat volume, an independent uh, game volume, and you decide how loud each one of them is. You can have them both max, both min, both mid, whatever you want, and it's instant, and it's a turn dial like we're all used to, and you can tell tact with tactile feedback, because if you go too far, it stops, right? It doesn't keep spinning over and over. It, you go to 100, it stops, and then you can pull it back a little bit. So I gotta say, I am really impressed with them. The sound is awesome. The distance you can, can be away from the hub is significant. Uh, at least 25 yeah, man, feet I can for go, me. I can go a good distance and they, yeah. before they start cutting out. I started uh, getting you, a little bit of crackling. You can go further than you'll ever need to go. Put it yeah, exactly, way. yeah. And so um, all this stuff that, that we're saying is true. Uh, you know, we, we, we want to push this company because I hate seeing companies like Turtle Beach and Astro, you know, get the credit for having awesome stuff when it's really not that awesome. Or maybe I've just been unlucky and had some bum headsets, but you know what? This one's real deal. I'm going to I'm going to push it and, and maybe if Astro or Turtle Beach wants to say no try this one I'll give that a try too but um you know as a as a purchaser I've purchased all my headsets even the 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 Lucid Sound I got a discount but it's it's still I paid a good amount of money for these things and my review is real these ones so far best headphones I've ever had and I told my wife that tonight cuz she was like you spent how much and I was like well it was still half off <laughs> so um but you know, the, so Joe Joe uh, has been saying it a lot, but it's with good reason. We're gamers. We want you to have the best. Uh, I'm going to get into some other stuff too, like the Elgato uh, stream decks that I have. Uh, we're going to talk about that in in the coming episodes. And I've, I've tried some different keyboards, uh, gaming keyboards, quote unquote, and gaming mice, quote unquote. You know, these these things that you know you always wonder what's Ninja playing with and what's you know Doctor Disrespect using. Well, I go buy that shit and then. Now I'm able to review it because we have the YouTube channel and uh, I'm going to talk about some of that stuff coming up uh, about like, should you go the extra mile and buy this stuff? Is it worth it? What does it mean between a brown key and a red key on, uh, you know, how fast it, it receives your, your inputs? We're going to get into that. And lastly, I'm going to hand it over to Joe in a second to wrap us up, but I've already recorded an episode and it's going to be episode number 51. Um, you'll recall uh, Jason, he's been on the episode a couple times now, and uh, I had to record an episode with somebody who could talk wrestling with me. Joe's not a big wrestling fan, so, um, you know, I could tell him about it, but he just sees men in tights, you know. Uh, my buddy Todd made Pretty it to much. Raw. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a significant thing, but um, the, the War Machine, the War Raiders, they are now in Raw, and <laughs> if you followed wrestling at all, you will know that they have overnight become the most talked about thing in all of wrestling, which really is significant coming from a kid who only knew wrestling. I mean, when I was a child, when I was between the ages of five and 15, wrestling was more important to me than video games. And that's no doubt. I would absolutely have watched wrestling overplayed playing video games. And 
You know, I was the Ultimate Warrior fan. I was Hulk Hogan fan. I was the Heart Foundation fan. Uh, my brother and I got into backyard wrestling because of how much we were into wrestling. And then one of the guys from our show, or from our little thing that we did, just never stopped. And now he's on primetime television. He's, he's the real deal. He's getting paid the real money. And uh, Vince McMahon came along at the last second and changed their name. And it became a joke. The internet has been laughing. And in a good way, they're not laughing at Todd and his tag team partner. They're laughing at Vince McMahon because he made a bad decision. He came along and took their name. They're, they're the tag team champions in NXT. And they come out on Raw as the Viking experience. And now you have a guy named Hanson, who's been Hanson for going on 15 years, and a guy named Raymond Rowe, which is, that's his real name. And now it's Ivar and Eric, the Viking experience. And the announcers acted like they've always been called the Viking Experience. These are your tag team champions on NXT, the Viking Experience, and here they are. That's Ivar and Eric. And everyone's like, what the fuck? That's Hanson and Roe, the War Raiders. And you're on, they're on your website. I mean, I just bought a shirt a month ago off a of WWE shop. <laughs> it says War Raiders. And at the last minute, right before they debuted, Vince McMahon made an executive decision, changed their name, come up with a new graphic, and let them go out there. They dominated, immediately were, were hailed as, you know, in the mix for the tag team titles on Raw. Uh, it's, it's significant. They're, they're going to be on the pay-per-views I watched as a kid, you know, Survivor Series and, and uh, SummerSlam. And, and it's just, you know, I was always saying that they're going to be on uh, WrestleMania one day. And um, that's the biggest show in the world for pay-per-view and paid events. It's, it's on par with the Super Bowl we talked about a couple weeks ago. And now Todd's going to probably be on that. Um, he's a humble guy. He's a great human being. And I, I am so happy that he's done this and he's become a sensation and a meme that will only help his career because any publicity is good publicity unless you're like murdering somebody and, and you know, that's not, that's not Todd. So, um, I have a full episode coming out. It's going to be released in a day or two just to offset, you know, so people don't get confused as to episode 50 and 51. But Joe, I implore you to listen to it as well. Maybe you'll be watching some wrestling with us. And uh, getting on the the, uh, the Viking bandwagon because um, you know, might, Jason man. had a lot. I might. <laughs> well, at least uh, I'll send you clips, right? I don't. I won't subject you to the whole show, but. Um, oh yeah! Oh yeah! But Jason's a, a longtime uh, wrestling fan, so we had a great chat about it—the ins and outs, the ups and downs of this whole thing, and and what it really means for them, and and for me as a friend to to watch the process and see your friend become a meme. I mean, top trending on Twitter, right? Twitter's a big platform, and. The Viking experience was top trending in the top 10 and War Raiders was top. So they were 20% of the top 10 uh, for a period of time on one of the biggest platforms in the entire world. That's a significant thing. One day you're going to see Backlog Exposed up there. Hey, hashtag the Backlog oh, Exposed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, lastly, follow us on Twitter and um, Instagram. We're almost at a thousand on both of those platforms. And uh, that's going to be significant when we get there. Joe. Tell us one last time about uh, Team Mimar Gaming real quick, because uh, I know you've been putting some time into that. Yeah, Team Mimar Gaming, that's, uh, that's the website I have. I've had for a while. Um, that's what I've been going by for, the, I don't know, many years now. But um, I'm trying to incorporate more. I'm trying to more focus on Backlog Exposed, honestly. It's hard to have two websites going. But um, there's content well, on both. It's good for... Um... To establish, you know, there's a there's a, a specific type of thing that you're doing there that is a little different than what we're doing here. And, I mean, I would never stop you if you want to log into uh, the Backlog Exposed Twitch, you know, and, and, and do that. But I know you've built, you've already got this brand going, um, you know, uh, I would say generally. Yeah, but I mean, see it's just backlog. one of those things, man, where, you know, if something's working, it's working. And if, if it's not, it's not. I mean, my YouTube channel, I got like 133 subs on there, but. But you got a new, I mean, you, got a, just, you got a custom name now, right? Yeah, I got my custom URL finally from yeah, so uh, YouTube. What's, it's what's that one? YouTube.com. It's YouTube.com forward slash Timmy Mark Gaming. Nice. <clears throat> About time, man. Well it's deserved. Easy, it's, it's easier, man, because, you know, you go on, you know, these websites or you go on when you're filling out a packet for a, you know, a producer or not a producer, but a, uh, a developer, you get this, you know, what's your YouTube channel or what's your YouTube URL. And it's youtube.com forward slash a bunch of random shit. They're going to look at that and be like, uh, eh, he doesn't even have his own, his own, uh, 
custom URL yet, so they're not going to look at it. You know, I appreciate now that. that, I have that it makes one, it a little bit different. I appreciate that for one reason, right? I mean, they're trying to make sure that you have content worthy of a hundred people saying, "Yeah, I'll subscribe to that." Before they say, yep. "We'll give you a custom name." Hundred's not that much. It, I mean, it is, but it isn't. And so, um, we, I, you know, we're trying to get the backlog up there as well, so we can have a custom name for that. Uh, I think we're at fifteen or twenty, um, but. You know, you become a nuisance to your friends and family when you're like, hey, go to my gaming channel channel that you're never going to listen to because, you know, like my sisters don't give a shit about gaming. So they're not going to listen to the podcast, right? If they do, it's really just to be nice to me as a, as a sibling. And so I respect that. But um, you, our listeners, you know, uh, a few of you have gone on there and, and uh, I'd like to see more go in there. Follow us both. Follow, you know, both the, the Team Emar Gaming and the Backlog Exposed. And, and you can do that very simply by going to our Linktree, right? There's this new thing, new service called Linktree. It's L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E. So Linktree slash the backlog exposed. And it's basically a bunch of bookmarks that we've been able to put in there. You'll have uh, all the Team Emar Gaming stuff and all the backlog exposed stuff. Uh, it's just a website that has our, back, our bookmarks. So you can go there or... Just go to our Backlog Exposed website at thebacklogexposed.com. You can also go to teamemargaming.com. Uh, the cool thing is we're, we're putting out content, and I think it's going to have to be separate in some ways because uh, I was talking to one of our listeners, and they were like, so what are you planning, you know, what are you doing with all this? I look at your, excuse me, I look at your Instagram, and it's all over the place. Well, let me put a little something-something out there. Uh, this isn't the easiest process here. I'm Joe. So. Damn, wrong one. Damn it. I know. I was trying to get to it. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. A little bit of something, something. A little bit of something, something. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> but yeah, like a little something, something about this is that like to get people to follow you, you have to follow them first until you become famous or until you become desired. Right. So if we have 100 people listening to us, uh, probably five of you will click, you know, follow because it's just you know, a lot of people don't do that. Maybe two of you will go review our, our podcast out of the, the 100, 150 people listening. It's really sucks, right? And you hear a lot of podcasters say it, go review us, go follow, go. It's because a lot of people don't, right? And that's the reality of it. And I'm not going to expect anybody to, but I am going to continue to ask. I ask that you follow us because it's a click of a button. It's super easy to do. We put it all out there. If you just go to our back, the backlogexposed.com, pretty easy to get to. Uh, but you can also tweet us, right? If you don't know how to get to that stuff, just tweet us at the backlog pod. The reason we're at the backlog pod is because the backlog was taken. And I don't want to make you have to type out the backlog exposed podcast. So the backlog pod, both Instagram and Twitter, Team Emar Gaming, it's out there. And so um, we just, we, you know, we're, we're growing. We almost have a thousand on both. That's a significant number because once we breach a thousand, we're no longer just people with followers were influencers, right? We have a crowd of people. And from there, it'll be faster to 2,000 and 10,000 and 20,000. Uh, we're not going to stop. We really are focused in this next 50 episodes, the next year, um, as we pr approach one year of doing this. Um, I think it shows our commitment. Uh, it shows that we have a lot to talk about. I know I have a lot to talk about. Damn, I don't shut up and I can't help it. This is a problem of mine, but this is therapy for me, Joe. <laughs> this is therapy for me because... Hey, man, you're good. You're good. Uh, uh, no, no, I'm sitting here in a room. I have no friends in, in Jacksonville. And uh, this is my friends. This is you as listeners are my friends. And uh, you hear me rant and rave and talk. And, and also, I got to admit, all my life, uh, you know, you, you meet people, they come and go. But... Um, just in the, in the, and I would say brief, it's, it's been a couple of years, but in the brief time I've been able to talk with Joe, uh, we used to go out for some beers or, or whatever, you know, some food and just enjoy ourselves, man. Just talking with this guy is, is therapy in itself. It's, um, it's awesome for me. This is like, a little bit of something, something. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of something for me. And so, um, I'm just, you know, every week I get to, to enjoy doing this and all the effort and all the work that goes along with it is an effort or work because i'm doing it with one of the best people in the world joe i'm hey. joe yeah you are i'm kevin <laughs> <laughs> and and i'm joe hours later <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and that's what you get out of me just i'll just talk and talk and talk until you cut me off but 
seriously, um, thank you, Joe, for the the first fifty episodes. This has been oh yeah, man. We're gonna really, do about really, three hundred more. Yeah, at least, man. I just I I'm I'm so happy to be able to do this. We talked about it for such a long time, and uh, this is just for me. It's just fuel to the fire, man. We're gonna keep going. We're gonna do a lot more. We're gonna piss off our wives while they're saying, "Are you done yet?" And I'm gonna say, "Hell no, we got another twenty thirty minutes." Just kidding. We're we're <laughs> wrapping it up, and uh, without further ado. I'm Joe. I'm Joe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of something, something. Hell yeah. You know, I, I realized one last thing is that um, we, uh, well, we've missed one sound bite, but two, um, we need to make more. So that's an- another thing. But I am going to leave you with one last thing. Joe, you still liking that microphone? I like this blue ball. It's nice, man. Cool. That's good to hear. It's good to hear. <laughs> All right, man. Why don't you, why don't you uh, wrap it up for us and, uh, and let everybody um, let everyone know how you feel. All right, guys. Thanks for listening to episode 50. We're going to have plenty more coming at you. Uh, again, visit us at thebacklogexposed.com, Twitter, Instagram. Um, also, um, go to lucidsound.com. Use promo code Team EMAR. Save 20% on your purchase. And get those um, 41s, man. Get those 41s. They're, they're worth it. Hey, and you're saving forty. I can only speak bucks. on I can only speak on behalf of the LS thirty ones, which are badass. And then Kevin has the forty ones, so we got you covered when it comes to reviews. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. lie to you about it; they are the best. Yeah, no forty. Get the forty ones. Save yourself forty bucks with that code. Seriously, it's it's worth it. It's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. Hey, what about Assassin's Creed though? Uh, is that is that your favorite game or? Yeah, yeah. I knew it. Just say Assassin's Just Creed for me. Assassin's Creed. Perfect, perfect. We'll be updating. We'll be we'll be updating some sound That'll bites later. New, Joe, I, be I say, a new sound bite. I, well, I've been I've been working on this, going on four months. I think you have not said Assassin's Creed. I've been waiting. I've been waiting, and you'll see. I've why. said it like three times this damn episode. I know, I know, but I had to get a clear one. I had to get a clear one. I wasn't sure as we wrapped it up. I was like, did he say it yet? I think he did, but um, I've been. I think three or four times I'm like, so what do you think of Assassin's Creed? And you're like, oh, I hate it, you know, and then you don't repeat it. So um, you finally did, and now you'll see, you'll see why next week. Oh God, I'm, I'm I can't wait. And you're, you're gonna go back and you're gonna remember, you're gonna remember a question I asked you a while back, and you're gonna say, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we love you, we thank you, and we really appreciate you, uh, Joe. I'm Kevin. I'm Joe. And this is the backlog. Blue balls. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> Exposed. <laughs> Have uh, a good one, guys. Yeah, thank you, everybody. 50 yeah, more yeah. coming up. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of something, something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.